Okay, bye, bye, goodbye, goodbye. Watch this video. Watch this informative video. If you want to. I'm I'm so tired. Anyway. Hello there, everyone. My name is Waba, and what you're about to watch is Mental Health Monday. It's a podcast that I do every single week live on Twitch. Link in the description below. We talk with one to two guests, sometimes three, um, on a topic of the month. And purely, I'm just asking them about their experience with this topic. Either they have personally gone through this or they have dealt with it in some manner in a personal way. The purpose of these talks is to bring education to others and to bring awareness to these issues and that mental health is real, mental health matters, it's okay to not be okay, and more to the point, it's okay to talk about it and it's okay to reach out for help. There's a lot that goes into Mental Health Monday, it's very intentional, and we have a bit of a check-in usually before the talks. In addition, I myself am trained as a mental health counselor, I have a master's in mental health counseling. Now, I never, ever, ever will claim that I am anyone's therapist online. I'm a mental health advocate, and I will share resources to the day I die. But as far as help goes, I highly encourage anyone out there to seek your own help. I have resources both on my Twitch page, but also in my Discord under resources, and highly encourage anyone to seek professional help if you are struggling with something that the people on my podcast are talking about with their experiences. In addition, they're raw, uncut, and unscripted. I usually have a few questions to kind of structure it a little bit, but we might go off the rails sometimes, you know, have some casual conversations. Other questions might be asked, you know, delving into details. All things considered, I put a content warning out there at the beginning of my talks usually, right before we jump into them. And it's just to say, hey, show some respect, you know, towards the guests and their stories, first of all, obviously. But more importantly, if a topic comes up that might be potentially triggering, feel free to click off the video, feel free, you know, to click off the stream, you know, during the stream, or mute the tab, whatever, you know, come back when you feel comfortable. I don't wish to trigger anyone, but I want these talks to be as unrestricted as possible so that folks can tell their story in their best way words. Your discretion is advised depending on the nature of the subject. So with that out of the way, I just want to welcome you into this video. Feel free to skip ahead as well. I'll put a timestamp in the description. And with that, enjoy Mental Health Monday and welcome into the Waba Fam, your mental health talk place and queer safe space. Take care. Okay. Hello. Hello. How's it going? How's it going? Well, yeah. it's going. We're here. We're alive. We're breathing. We are existing in a space. Yes. And it's an amazing thing. Um, welcome, in everyone, to Mental Health Monday. How are you doing? Today we are talking with uh, not Jenny from the block, but Jenny Fur. Uh, the amazing mental health peer support creator as well does the feelings check-in. Uh, Jenny, can we just start with what are your pronouns and uh, please introduce yourself and also welcome in Mukas Tati. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Lava Fam. Wait, what did you ask me? Uh, what are your pronouns and introduce yourself. Oh, she, her, and um, hi, I'm Jen or Jennifer or Jennifer, which... You know, there's been a few people who have said, oh, Jennifer, like Jennifer? I didn't know you meant Jennifer by s typing Jennifer. Oh, so yeah, also Jennifer, in case you didn't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I am a peer support specialist. I have, like Waba said, a stream that is mental health focused and we put a lot of focus on feeling words and trying to identify how we are feeling um 
and there are feeling words like available to look through and I just really encourage <clears throat> us to try to figure out how we're feeling because I feel like we don't have the most awareness like we kind of do but like how often do you find yourself legitimately like describing how you're feeling with a more descriptive feeling word than good bad okay s surprised irritated like you know we know a lot of feeling words but it's like it's more like we know them in like random conversation it's not like we often apply them to how we're feeling i feel like right and we, we don't really think about we're not we don't never necessarily bring ourselves mindful of how we're feeling in a particular moment um and i find a lot of value in in your community and your streams because of that because like sometimes like i'll come into your stream and be like how are you feeling Waba? and i'm like I just want to say I'm feeling shit, but like, no, I should like put more thought into it, you know? Um, and it's good to put more thought into it. It's good to like, you know, kind of like, I, I find it kind of be like a meditative kind of thing, uh, like a mindfulness meditation of just like. I appreciate you I saying that. Right I, I appreciate you saying that because I always like, I don't know, I, things I read and different things. I don't know. Everyone kind of is like meditation, meditation, meditation. And I'm like, it's really hard for me to do that. But then someone kind of introduced to me that the way that we, um, I like that. Tony. The way that we check in and like have to take a moment to remove ourselves from like kind of what's going on outside and pay attention to the inside that it is kind of like a micro meditation. And so that made me feel a lot better. Be and when thinking of it that way, I feel like I can definitely see, I guess, the benefits from it because now I notice when I like, when my body tenses up a little bit more and it's not that I noticed it before, but because I paid attention to it and because I tried to, you know, label it, I am more aware. Mm -hmm. no, I agree with that. Uh, there's actually like a specific uh, meditation um, that I've taught people how to go through it, but it's basically it's just like bringing awareness to each part of your body. But it was, it's kind of in a way that it's like, it's not an anxiety thing. It's more just kind of like a, um, you know, how much tension you're holding in your shoulders and just kind of like, you know, release all your muscles and then bring. Yeah. And I'm not even, I'm not even as good at that, but I will say, or, and I will say that <clears throat> the feeling words. I think have been made it easier for me to notice those things compared to, I guess, maybe coming from it from an, like a body scan type of way, because those have always been le like more like, I mean, yeah, I feel it, but I feel, I feel, okay, I get, but like, even then, sometimes if we're not putting feelings to it, like, I don't know, I guess there's probably, you know, some use to acknowledging it, but how ironic. I like pink. I like that you like pink. I just like it is matching perfectly. It is. I love it. Also, uh, Jenny uh, inspired the feelings command that I pop up every so often. Uh, also, maybe a feelings redemption. I think I, I don't know if I got rid of the redemption. I'm going to feel bad if I got rid of it. Yeah, I got rid of it. Oops. <laughs> but we have the feelings uh, command to help people describe how they're really feeling today. Um, Would you like important. to see the latest and greatest mm, mood meter? So we've got the board, the word board, the word list board, sure. right? But I made, I made this fancy new Ooh, like mood yours. meter. Whoa. Okay. So it's on a scale from energy to pleasantness. Higher or lower energy. So you higher energy when you're, you know, in a more angered state, but also when you're more sure. like lively and optimistic, you're lower energy when you are down and discouraged and depressed. And you're also lower energy when you're comfy and serene and cozy, but you've got your pleasantness, higher or lower pleasantness. So then you've got, you know, higher pleasantness, higher energy, higher pleasantness, lower energy. You're, those are kind of like the more positive half. And then you've got lower pleasantness with the higher energy and lower energy. 
I messed up. I love it. this and I understand it fully. Oh I like God. it because it's like a quick way because before because at first it's like you see all the words and you're like I don't freaking know, but then to it's start a, with energy like, and pleasantness, yeah. it's like okay okay because like the lower your energy goes, you go from concerned to discouraged. Like you because mm -hmm. w when you're nervous, you are a little bit more moving. You're not stationary, I guess. Right, you're you're a bit more. You have more energy in the nervousness. I love this. And the monster faces help. I want to steal this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you for Hell sure. Yeah. Kill a, kill a quell. Welcome in. Killa, how are you doing? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Stealing. <laughs> Teddy, um, I really love that you have the thing with the percentage of happiness. But, and I also love that you can always think of something that will help increase that percentage with even just a single percentage point. And I'm I've had a excited. friend say that. Yeah, I've, I've had a friend use the percent thing because it's like, and let me. I guess I'm. I can put this down, but if chat is genuinely engaged right now because they haven't really had feeling words up, then I'll leave it up for like a few more seconds. But like, <clears throat> my friend has used that example before. Like, what can I do to make it a single percent better? Because no, yes. no matter where I'm at, I use that like, well. what what is the single yeah. like i know it's like oh we're a single percent better every day too but like yeah. I, I like trying to ask people like what can i do to make that a little bit better or what can i do to help you today or what can i do to like help help you feel support and loved here today um i teddy also on the same uh with teddy's chats right now i hate that people try to tell you to try being more happy i think mm. that's unrealistic and i think it's putting a lot on you you it's know? it's it's putting a lot on you and it's also an expectation that's going to lead to disappointment. In right. fact, we it's interesting how I guess maybe kind of the culture of the company company country is mm -hmm. and and now forgive me because I definitely don't have proper um understanding of the movie pursuit of happiness. That's just your mom, fuck your mom. Uh, anyway, welcome to Mental Health Monday. Fuck my own mother. Happy Mother's Day. I'm your mommy now. That was yesterday. Sorry. Go on, Jenny. I'm sorry. I haven't seen Pursuit of Happiness, so if other people are like, yeah, that's the point of the movie. But anyway, um, <clears throat> it's interesting how in this country it's like <clears throat> we seek to find happiness. <clears throat> sorry. We seek to find happiness. Like, what can we do to feel more happy? Happy, happy, joy. Like, let, let's get to happy. And striving for happiness is going to set you up for disappointment because we as humans all, like, all experience a range of emotions. And because emotions change, it's not like you can just kind of expect to be happy all the time. In fact, that's kind of why I like the mood meter as well in the example of kind of higher and lower energy because if you think about it, content can be kind of a form of happiness, really. You're content with where you're at in the present moment. You're... I had a word, but it's gone now. But like, you know, and so striving to feel better is good. But striving to be happy all of the time is unrealistic. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's on the same veins of just, uh, you know, toxic positivity. You know, you can't you can't always be happy. You can't always be up, but you can't always be on, say, so to speak. And I talk about this a lot in relationship to like content creation, like being on stream for long periods of time. Like some days I'm able to go like fucking Saturday. I went for what, like nine and a half hours and I was fine the whole time. Like I was jamming, I was vibing, I was enjoying myself. Um, and then Sunday, I just felt like I had like no energy and I felt bad. Um, but I still went for like my five hours and I felt okay about it, but I w knew I was like not a hundred percent. Well, um, I'm glad that you me. went through with it. And that reminds me a couple weeks ago, I, I think it was like I, in recovery of like, I took a couple trips home within a few weeks of each other. And mm -hmm. that's just really taxing compared to all the stuff I don't do otherwise. And there was one day where I was feeling really super low energy, but there was nothing in me that didn't want to stream. 
And I had this dilemma because it was like, okay, well, I'm a check-in. I'm a facilitator. I am right. the leader. But you got to check in with yourself first. Well, so I am I, I am checking in with myself, but like I am the leader in this. I, this is how I'm feeling. Now, I, I still want to be in this space. I don't technically have someone that I can pop in in my place and more or less do the same thing. Like, you know, I can suggest other streamers. And... Right. I kind of talked with a couple different, well, I, I don't remember if I talked about it on stream or if it was in Discord, but I was kind of like, what does it feel like for you guys? Like, is I don't, is it like a turnoff for, to see me low energy and not like an, even a turnoff in a, in a bad way, but like a, do you feel like it is clear that I should really just go rest and not be on? Or are you appreciative of the ability to see the transparentness of low energy and still being okay with showing up? Because I can show up. I just have lower energy today. And so it's like, you know, you talk about being on or off as a content creator. I was still okay with being on, but what being on looks like, I think is different on different days. Yeah, I yeah, I I agree fully with that because definitely I'll tell people like, hey, I still want to be here, but I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling a hundred percent me. Um, but you know, even when I'm not feeling a hundred percent me, that can still enable both myself and my community to have a really good discussion because my focus always is on mental health. So I think even at my low points, it still enables me to have a really great discussion about how I still do things that I feel like I have an obligation to do, um, you know, and, you know, get through it, but also, like, be present for myself. But also, it, it, for me, it's like a bit of, th it's like a therapeutic kind of thing for me. It's like me asking for support from my community, which is something I don't yeah, do Yeah, it's almost often, like, but can you guys support me today, even though I'm the yeah, one on camera? Ask for that. Yes. It's important that I still ask for that, though, because um, I think it's necessary to build the kind of relationship and the kind of community that I have is for, to make myself comfortable with asking people for support back um, in that emotional sense, you know? And, and I received a lot of support. And I do want to be clear that because... How do you say rib, 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 ribbon? Ribbon, just ribbon. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they said, I appreciate when someone takes the time to take a break instead of pushing themselves. And I will say that I, 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 it's definitely been a road for me because of how much, like, sometimes I don't know if it's because I'm such a routine oriented person that it, it causes a breakdown. Like, a, Right, I would be worse off if I did a stream kind of thing. Right, there, there. Only recently was the first time I didn't like cry before I didn't before I chose to cancel stream, and that was because I had finally started to learn that this is a low enough that I do not need to push myself to get on stream, and yeah. I didn't feel bad about it, and I know that which is great because I had talked about it before with them that mm. they would appreciate, you know, seeing me cancel basically. And, right. um, it, like I said, that was the first time that I didn't cry before canceling a stream or I'll, sometimes I've gotten on a stream and have found myself, you know, in tears, maybe midstream or whatever. Um, and it's kind of like, yeah. even then in that moment, it's like, well, do I go or do I like, stay and i think there was one time where i i don't want to say i pushed through it i lived through it i i continued existing through it i think what i did was we played geo guesser which is a game that i think it's like yes. a comfort game for me mm -hmm. um and then another day i was like okay these tears seem like tired tears i should go to sleep <laughs> so i guess it's been a learning thing for me but i do want to say that I also take the breaks, if that makes it. It makes a lot of sense to me, honestly. Um, I, I think, let me catch up with my chat real quick because there's some like really great comments here right now. Um, Teddy, your mom tries to get you to do stuff, makes her happy in order to get help me get over my depression. Yeah, well, she's a fucking dummy if she thinks that. Or she's a narcissist, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just shooting off the hip 
uh, shooting off the hip diagnosing here. Don't don't make me do that. I probably shouldn't do that. It's bad for ethics reasons. But like, it sounds like an awful situation. I hope you escape it. Or she like wakes up and smells the flowers and like respects you and your emotions and stuff. But it sounds like if this is a pattern of behavior, it's probably not going to go anywhere in a good direction anytime soon. But fuck, that sucks, dude. That honestly sucks. Like, that's like, why is she making it about her? You moved to the UK? Good for fucking you. Good for fucking you. That's great. I love that for you. Uh, Killa says, I try to accept that every day is not going to be the best, and that way I don't get disappointed. It helped my anxiety and depression a lot. Yeah. Um, it's really fucking important, actually. I love that you do that for yourself. Um, because that's, that's just facts. Like, not every day is going to be like 100% I'm feeling great and wonderful and on top of the world day. It's just and that not, doesn't mean it's a bad day either. That doesn't mean it's a bad day. It just means like, all right, this is a low day. Um, and the other thing with depression and anxiety, particularly, uh, I talked about this last. I talked about this yesterday. Um, is that it's so so important to tell people and to let people know who have like depression, anxiety, especially people who have like suicidal ideation, suicide th suicidal thoughts. Um, is that there is an end to it. There is like a light at the end of the tunnel, say so to speak, uh, because for a lot of us, myself included when you're living in that for so long, that is your norm, that is your fucking default mode. You don't know anything else other than being fucking low and miserable and shitty and feeling shit. Um, but, you know, once you stop feeling so shit and once you like get help and whatever, whatever, whatever avenues you need to get help and get yourself up to like the normal, you know, now you'll be able to kind of tell yourself in a way like, all right, I know I'm feeling really, really shit right now, but this does have an end. This too shall pass kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think it's super important. We have, I added quotes about it yesterday as well. So it's probably like quote 96. I don't know. Um, that's important. The pursuit of happiness is a really great movie. I think you would agree with what you said. That's awesome, Ruben. Uh, Splur, she still hasn't found the cure for depression. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, and Ribbon, I agree with you as well. It is a mix of both. It is transparency, but if you need a break, then I appreciate, I also appreciate when someone takes the time. Cause like, here's the other part about it. And I, I ranted about this before is like, I don't want someone to, I, it's like a car crash. You can't look away from it, but I don't want someone to use their mental health and display it in like a really like toxic and hurtful way for themselves. You know, I don't want someone to have to like push themselves to go do a stream. Like, if you're feeling that bad, just take the rest. It's okay. Like you're going to feel guilty and you're going to feel awful because it's like, well, my metrics are going to be down and well, you know, I'm not I'm buddy out I'm going to be out of the discovery whatever thing. Like, listen, your health needs to come first. Make time for wellness. Your metrics will go down if you burn out later. Wellness. Yeah, like your metrics are going to go down anyway. People are going to see your energy and everyone's going to be like, "Well, I don't want to be here." Cuz like they're cuz that's what Teddy was saying is that, you know, it's a mix of concern like it's a very delicate balance to be able to stream even when you're not feeling well because you want to be able to like be there and be present but you also don't want to just be like i'm sick as fuck and i'm just gonna like be awful and depressing and you know make everyone feel shit because of that like i don't think that's healthy either um also i put forth the advice form this is a new show that i'm trying to get started up in a exponential way uh it's called Waba's words of wisdom we'll do it every so often on saturdays uh where people can ask for advice anonymously you can submit a reddit style story or a topic and we will talk about it and i'll pull up resources and i'll prep and whatnot and screen the stories uh jk fighter hi welcome in how are you doing today hope you're doing well hope you're taking care of yourself thank you for the question uh we're going to get to our actual eating disorder topic now so i'm going to we're going to hold that question for now um i'm going to hold that question for now it is in my queue though texas or no texas <laughs> she's still in Bulgaria. good i'm kind of hiding my answer get question answer get question when i was in the clouds or when it's coming up it's it'll be coming up jk don't worry yeah we have a good response we have good responses um you have a question about eating disorders might be a stupid one the only stupid question is the question that you haven't asked yet so feel free to feel free to type Q colon and then followed by your question here. 
and then I'll pull it up on feature.chat because that's a thing that we can do because I have this cool thing called feature.chat that everyone should utilize. Look at that, whoosh, and it makes a whole whooshing sound. Okay, I can't spell anonymously. Great, thank you. No, I just, I just was staring at it and I just was, I just couldn't tell, so I had to check for myself. I don't know how to spell anonymously. Well, I was confused. I, I couldn't, I was, because I've seen a non and I was like, could have been a nano if it was spelled with a no. So is it a no or is it like, cause it, sorry, I just had my Anyway, own. hello, Jenny. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to steamroll you right now. <laughs> I'm just out of it, man. Uh, so yeah, welcome in. We're talking about eating disorders, um, and you've had experiences with eating disorders. If you want to just, if you want to take that question now, or, you know. Well, so I feel like it's almost kind of, I feel like it's almost kind of a good segue to, mm -hmm. for me to at yes. least get my brain going when it comes to JK's question, because uh, he said, how do you know if you have an eating disorder or mm -hmm. if you're just having cravings for like a so, week? And yeah, no, I agree, because usually we start with like, okay, let's define what the fuck we're talking about. What is an eating disorder? I, and you can look at the medical model and look at eating disorder, and I know that, you know, there's different um, little bullet points that you got to get checked to meet the certain criteria for the certain diagnosis, but... If you think of an alcoholic who may consider themselves an alcoholic because they, but they, you, you've had someone on in the past who um, only drank a couple times a year, but when they drank, recognized the horrible effects that would come from it. And so with eating disorders, I feel like it is similar to how we may may shrug off alcoholism um and i like to change it from eating disorder to disordered eating just like disordered drinking mm -hmm. i agree I, I prefer disordered eating but it's just not buzzwordy enough for sure yeah. sure but it's like so in because there there's so many different like uh, forms mm -hmm. behaviors in in disordered eating that um Sorry, the diagnose thing. Okay, sorry. I can't um, diagnose anyone. Um, the disordered eating is so much more like, I guess, common than what would fall in or under like the DSM, I guess. And that might be part of why it's maybe underreported. But again, I guess if we want to, like, it, it's after I like discovered that like you know the DSM and just like the medical model is like not the most reliable it's harder to balance that because i feel like if we're experiencing the things and we want to improve our habits or we are seeing um you know bad results and that kind of leads into this might be a little bit of an adhd thought but bad results mm -hmm. in leading into the idea that if you are overweight that there is a disorder if you're not interested in losing weight or right. you do have to lose weight because you have weight on you or because you hit like the idea of losing weight. Um, right. It's a ridiculous assumption. Disordered, not disordered, but like mm -hmm. kind of reasonably disordered. And, and I learned that in a more like clear way when I was watching a TV show called good trouble, um, some people have heard of the Fosters. The Good Trouble is like them after. Anyway, there's a person in there with the storyline, and she used to be anorexic. Now that's not mm. what I am, what I have, but um, I binge. Um, but mm. she she was losing weight because she had been she had gotten involved in like this exercise thing, and so she was just like naturally losing weight. And then after a while, I guess she noticed that she was getting attention and she liked the attention and so that caused her to start trying to exercise harder to continue to lose weight rather than continuing to like almost not even think about that have that not be a motivator to push her even more like that is kind of 
a, a toxic thing in itself. Am I making sense? Because um, I've tried to explain this before, and I don't know if I was very A little clear. bit. What are you trying to get at? Um, that the Basically, that like... Oh, farts. It was a big ADHD story. Um, that... Cravings versus just uh, cravings versus disordered eating, perhaps. No, I kind of went into like a different topic, but because like same topic but different. different but energy. because it was different, it's not making sense now. Okay. Do you want to collect your thoughts and I'll answer questions? Yes, that would probably. Be best. Okay. So let me first uh, start off with defining what eating disorders are. Um, eating disorders is effectively just a bad relationship with food um, uh, in the way that, you know, you kind of see eating and see food and see eating behaviors as something that you have to control. The biggest thing with eating disorders is that, you know, either it's a lack of control or it's a incessive over compulsive compulsive need to control either your intake or your outtake whatever the heck um so eating disorders fall into the category of uh the anxiety control disorders so ocd is in the same kind of like field of eating disorders um and you know i think it's really important to understand you know what is just a craving and what is a you know actually feeling like you are having a eating disorder and the difference is is that a craving is something that like you're gonna have cravings like everyone has cravings like i like i want to crave chocolate right now so i'm gonna go get chocolate right but a eating disorder craving is more like um your your typing is so loud sorry sorry um so, so an eating disorder craving is more synonymous to you can't control that craving in that you have to go get it right now or else you're just going to like explode basically like you you feel so controlled by that craving that you can't think about anything else until you get it but then once you do it and you eat whatever if it's a binge you know if we're talking binge eating disorder for instance you know you crave for something you go get the thing you binge on it, and then there is a there's a there is a polar opposite basically reaction, <laughs> uh, where you feel either immense guilt, uh, you might decide to throw up, you might decide to take laxatives or something else, but some other compensating behavior for that binge, and there's always associated feelings of guilt and feelings of needing control and loss of control. So like. This is also kind of answers when is a binge just like me i want to snack on a thing and when is it a eating disorder binge is again do you feel like you're in control of how much you're eating do you feel like you can stop at any time and can you stop you know kind of thing that's the difference there um <laughs> also i love your name but fucking questionable now very questionable first message. Thanks for the follow. Eat, sleep, poop, repeat. <laughs> what a fucking name. Um, no, I can't diagnose you, um, but I'm more than happy to talk with you and provide peer support uh, regarding excessive drinking. We're not necessarily talking about excessive drinking today, but we will be talking about substance abuse and recovery uh, next month. Uh, no, uh, in July, rather, not June in July uh, with various people. Um, and I have to actually recruit people for that talks as well. But yeah, we'll talk about that then. My recommendation as always to anyone who might be struggling with something or feel like they might have some disorder this way or another is to make contact with your primary doctor and reach out about asking about therapy, asking about someone to help you with whatever you're going through and figure out what's going on with your trusted professionals. I also provide resources at the bottom of my page in the panels below. Of course, these resources are just a start, and I highly recommend that you continue looking for resources in your area. Contact 
your local Department of Social Services as well, as they always have resources there too. Um, Ace of Ace of Squay, I can't even pronounce that. Oh my gosh, Ace of Squads. There we go. Dyslexia is a bitch. Ace of Squads. Thanks for the follow as well. Welcome to the Wawa family. Mental health talk place. Queer safe space. Uh, Teddy with the question. I am used to eating only a sandwich once a day, and I'm used to starving myself until pain. I'm overweight. I need to lose weight because of heart issues. How can I increase my food intake and lose weight? Um, so this is a two-part question, Teddy, uh, and I like it because part one is funny thing is you actually have to eat in order to lose weight because the less you eat, the less you eat and the more that you restrict your intake, the slower your metabolism is going to get. And because your metabolism becomes slow, your body's going to go into basically fat storage mode and you're going to find yourself either stagnant or even gaining weight. Um, so this is something definitely to discuss with your doctor and a potentially a nutrition about like what kind of things you should be eating, you know, how often you should be eating, etc. so forth. Um, something that uh, my partner uses is a Fitbit and an app where they log all their food and the Fitbit kind of determines for them what their, you know, kind of quote unquote goals should be for a day based on their level of activity because it measures how, how much they walk around and stuff. So it's all very individual and dependent and I don't want to turn you into a calorie counter, say so to speak, um, but I'd rather want you to turn into someone who is looking at your food intake in like a holistic and healthy way and not in like a kind of like control myself way. Because the whole point of talking about eating disorders is to try to break the stigma associated with them and kind of point out to folks that these are things that are very disordered eating because it's like you're trying to exert some sort of control over something. And by con trying to exert that control, you're hurting yourself in the end because the end result of an eating disorder, unfortunately, is and can be death. Um, so it is a very serious thing to talk about and think about. Um, but thank you for contributing with the question. I really do appreciate that. Um, and Ribbon was trying to remind you, Jenny, you think you're talking about some sort of societal port for disordered eating. And if you're overweight, they tell you like, oh, well, you should stop eating. And all the attention is, I think so. Like I get attention at this size. So even if I'm not skipping meals, I feel compelled to try to keep losing weight, even if there's no reason for it. Hmm. Not from my personal experience, several friends dealing with issues. Also, TV shows the characters suffer that. Yeah, there's always a focus on bigger people. Um, it's either a focus on either you're like too big or you're too small. There's never a just right. There's never a what's healthy. Go for it. M me? Yeah. Wait, go for what? I don't know. Keep talking on that, I think. That's what I mean. Oh, well, as far as collecting my thoughts, I definitely forgot I was doing that and started listening to you. Oh. Um. <clears throat> yeah, the, yeah, uh-huh, that, yeah. I can't follow up on that. But also, okay. I do want to say that you defining it was definitely not nothing that I was going to be able to find myself, which is the interesting part. And I think I said this mm -hmm. last time that I was on your stream for this is that like sometimes I feel like I guess an imposter to be talking about it even though I am existing and I have experience and I can share that experience but an imposter because I choose to speak on it but can't even necessarily define it very much mm -hmm. um I don't, I don't know if you changed the mic setting by the way but you're cutting out a little bit now I'm sorry um I didn't change a mic setting I turned my computer volume but my air is Oh, it's probably Discord trying to, like, get rid of that. Is okay. it really bad? No, it's not too bad. It's just at the end of sentences when you get low. Okay. But it's fine for now. So, you know, I, I think it is important, and that's what we focus on here on Mental Health Monday, is basically I'm trying to say that you do have value here and I don't want you to feel like an imposter because your story is important and your experiences are important. And that's what I try to focus on, you know? Mm. Um, so 
what is your story with eating disorders? Like, what have you experienced personally? Well, I, I guess I'm trying to think of like when, when maybe I would have been considered to have an eating disorder, um, as opposed to when I started e disordered eating. Sure. Um, because I think about, so I'm 5'9", um, same height, my dad's, our plates at our house were You're completely cut out there. Should I go turn my hair off? I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe you can click the thing on Discord where it says noise suppression and click that off. It's right below video connected on the left hand side of Discord. Wait, like you don't have to go to settings for it? No, you just click noise suppression. Oh, well, my air just turned off. Did it make a difference? <laughs> um, I'm hearing you a lot better. Oh, dear. Okay, well, all right. I'll okay. remind me next time it pops on. Okay, okay. Um, so what I was saying was, um, I'm 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, my mom's about my height. My dad and my brother are both taller than me. And we have these really large dinner plates. Okay. They were thick. So, like, and I say that because it wasn't until, like, college that I really saw, like, I don't know, like, what is it? It's not the... The really, really thin kind. I think there's a word for the dishes. But anyway, like, Porcelain we always had... or plastic? No, just, like, way thin. Like, ours... Like, my dishes are, like, it, it, almost half an inch thick compared that's, to, like, a plate that... It's really thick. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And they were very large. And so I grew up eating on mm -hmm. dinnerware that held so significantly nice. much more food than maybe an average one and now this isn't you know me like mm. shaming my parents or my family or anything but still but, it like, didn't help the situation to have the big yeah place. like i i used to be able to eat a whole pizza and not really feel that bad about it and you not think about it really and well and, and i mean that when i was younger because as i've gotten older it i think the like the the guilt and the my stomach not feeling good types of things I'm more sensitive to now because I don't remember feeling like as guilty about the eating. I just didn't feel like I was as thin as everyone else. I was all in on the eating <laughs> because I didn't see really anyone eat much less. And um, mm. I think that that's kind of interesting because that's like, you know, that that sets you up for... I don't know, just like eating more than normal. Um, I agree. I mean, my parents were the same way. We had very large plates. My mom would encourage us to get seconds. Yeah, and you know, it's not like it's a bad thing, which... It's not necessarily which, a bad thing, but just the consistency of that was the bad thing. I th And it, even more so, I think it's because, because we don't talk about what disordered eating looks like mm -hmm. is because we... So we can't apply the statement of absolutely get seconds if you feel like you can have it because we don't have the kind of awareness as to what it feels like to maybe be doing too much or what like i don't know i feel like we're taught it but that's the other part is just that like everything we're taught is so much less than what i feel like the average person eats anyway also in general like, you know, it's like, oh, this much of this, this much of this, and this much of this type of thing. I feel like mm. that wasn't helpful. I lost my train of thought again. So, <clears throat> um, in high school, I think when I look back, I, ha I, I have, like, a lot of, like, gastro issues, but nothing that's ever been, like, we gotta keep going to the doctor, because it's usually, like, I have gas, or I ate something bad, or I ate too much of something, and when I was in, like, high school, there was, I, I don't know if it was high school or middle school, but mm -hmm. one time we went to the ER, because we thought it was, like, my appendix, and it turned out to be, um, poop, and, uh, Oh, like, the doctor straight up was like, you're full of shit. <laughs> and, Funny, uh... 
but also probably embarrassing. After that was when, like, you know, laxatives and uh, what's the lesser one? Like, Miralax isn't like a full on like laxative, it's like a lubricant. Miralax. Fiber. Like a... Fiber. <laughs> Miralax is fiber, or, but they say it's a lubricant, but I hear you. Um, yeah, like stool softener is similar. Softener, there we go. Um, so I was introduced to those things because it's like, oh, well, you're getting backed up pretty easily, so let's help that. And then I think as I started to learn I, that I had more control over my body and that I was overweight at this point and that I really didn't want to be that, and then I... I think I started realizing that like my food, my eating was linked to why I was getting backed up. And so then I think I, I, I think I abused laxatives when I was middle school, high school ish, because after a while I realized, oh, well, if this is what cleans me out and I keep getting backed up because I keep eating a lot, I just probably should just, you know, take these after I eat a lot, just kind of regular, like just plan on it. And... What was your I, thought process behind that? Like, would you think that was going to accomplish for you? Well, I definitely didn't think of it as abuse. I really thought that I was trying to get backed up. Mm. But I think... Which is what makes it weird, I guess. But I think that... Yeah. That's what it started as. Right. I wonder if I may have, like, you know, witnessed a weight change, like, before and after going to the bathroom or taking a laxative, like, seeing it on the scale or something that made me turn into, like, no, I have to make sure I keep taking these so that I don't gain extra from what I binged. But I don't know when that thought process changed. I mean, when something is, like you do it automatically you might not necessarily think about it um but you know as other people kind of talk to you if you, if you talk to other people about it your thought process might change because someone might kind of shame you for that um and then you might you know just double down and be like no this is my thing and i need to do this for me because it's for my health and you convince yourself you know because to me it sounds like you had basically a traumatic experience pseudo-traumatic experience um with just you know like oh shit i'm full of shit well i have to you know get the shit out so i should just take laxatives on the regular that just makes sense and that probably it. would lead to weight loss too so why not right because you're like well everyone wants me to be thinner anyway so mm -hmm. I, it was really that kind of, so I, it wasn't just so much i guess to keep me from getting backed up but it was like almost that was the camouflaging reason Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I don't want to get backed up, but also... So, so you already had that negative thought there, you know, it, it, it was from the get-go. Mm-hmm. So then, so then at what point did you, like, did someone say something or you finally realized, or what, what was the click? What was the click for you? I think I was in college, and I may have been in one of my classes where we went more in depth. I think that... It, I, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like certain things or thoughts or topics or just random whatever, when they're reintroduced to me in, like, an adult life or something, it oh, sounds I like I just didn't know that I learned about it before or something, if that makes sense. Yes. And, and so when it came up in this class and they were talking about laxatives, I was like, because I've never, I, I don't think that I thought that I was much of a binge like I, I don't even know if I knew the word binge eating kind of at first compared to when I like I may have learned about binging around the same time I as I learned about like laxatives it was just that I ate really bad or I ate a lot and um and you'd always done that without the terms yeah yeah because it was it, it wasn't I don't want to say it wasn't shamed because we had big plates mm -hmm. and we cook a lot and we all like I know we cook for leftovers but it's like um, my appetite did not shrink until I went through a year of for whatever reason not having an appetite or my mm -hmm. stomach didn't shrink until I like I used to be able to eat like my threshold for you know two pints of ice cream 
was a thing and now i it i get sick a lot easier now mm. so it's almost as if i can maintain it better simply because i shrunk my stomach somehow mm. um but i think it was in that in one of those classes that i was like wait laxatives laxatives is related to being disordered eating and it, it maybe it was something like i hadn't even said out loud to myself yet that like uh -huh, i know i'm really using these laxatives more so to try to keep weight off than to you know, not get backed up, but because I hadn't, like, learned about it or talked about it out loud, I think it's, like, that's when it came to fruition, realization, I don't know, that... I think that's how it is, though, is that, you know, you don't really, we don't really question our own behaviors until we're either presented with information that makes us, like, become conscious of them, you know? Drawing awareness to yourself and drawing awareness to an issue is the first step of kind of solving that issue and for a lot of us we just kind of just <clears throat> do things that's fair <clears throat> um in fact the but it's interesting though because i think that when i did learn it i i was able to stop which is not something that is you know, easy because I very much still have minimal control over what I do eat when I do eat. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I know I have control, but like, you know, the lack of control or whatever. Anyway, um, where was I going with that at the beginning part? Um, months are just meowed and it got me off. That's not what I meant. I just lost it. Uh, pointing out eating disorders, etc., so forth. Um, you learned about a thing in the class. Oh, I, I, I was able to like stop. That's what it was. I, I kind of was like, okay, I probably should back off on the laxatives. And it's interesting mm -hmm. how I was able to like back off on using the laxatives because of how hard it is for me to back off on food or bet. Like I go very all in on really any kind of one thing including going to bed early and um yeah i remember in high school this kind of goes to the skin picking and the body focused repetitive behaviors in high school when i was picking they thought it was self-harm like because you know they just right. didn't know that i wasn't trying to harm myself i guess mm -hmm. and um they prescribed me clonopin and i took what that like a couple times and it made me feel so like wow. you know out of it that i was like okay this does feel kind of good but it feels like the kind of good that if i keep taking this i'm not gonna stop and so i feel like in a way i almost have certain like inside stoppers that like once it knows the effects that it's like no no, no we can't just like don't just don't try don't 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 try and so it's like i only took clonopin like barely once a month if that because i yeah. even if i should have taken it i was too afraid of getting hooked on it and so i think that because How i have are that, you? i was in high school but i was also prescribed the medication that i'm on now and i've had to go to the er because i foamed at the mouth one night and it's because they don't prescribe that medication to kids under 18. clonopin not, it wasn't Clonopin that did oh. that. It's the medication I'm ironically on now after we tried all of the other yeah. ones over my life. And then we were like, all right, well, we're back at square one. This didn't work for you when it was under 18, but how about now? Oh, my God. What? I mean, Clonopin is just like, to me, is like, that's pretty bad. That's pretty but bad. No, it, it, but, but like I said, they thought it was self-harm. They thought my picking was self Like, look, you can't just like look at me and, and be like, this girl needs doesn't need treatment and by treatment it's like pills right especially because like seeing a counselor in my town i feel like there was only like two whole counselors in my town other than school counselors i mean where do you live what state if you're okay. i'm in iowa i was in a rural town though yeah, so we, we had there like we a, like eleven thousand people you're in iowa so, you're in a rural town rural town they like probably don't even don't... have walmart damn that's kind of that's super rural <laughs> um that's fucking wild but it also like sadly doesn't surprise me 
that the doctors didn't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know, well, and they're I just mean, like, oh, well, we'll just throw pills say, at the problem. This is fine. It's, it's funny that you say they don't know what they're talking about because I, there's also a, a distinct incident that I remember in high school where I went to the doctor. I don't remember what we were there for, but I'm pretty sure it was the lady doctor. And I was trying to be healthy, and I think I had a smoothie that morning, and it was a banana smoothie, and I had put more than one banana in it. And she was like, you can't do that. That's so much sugar. You literally can't do that. Like, you're just going to continue to gain weight. And the, with the levels that you're at now, like, you're headed toward peak picos and i'm like like at the time i didn't know how ridiculous that what she was saying That's was so but like ridiculous dude i learned that that is not a full-on path to obesity equals picos where'd they get picos from a of all why didn't they just say diabetic like to what? scare me into not putting too many bananas in my shake even though i'm trying to eat <laughs> Jenny, you better be careful if you put too many bananas in your shake, then uh, the fucking food police are going to come and arrest you. Like, Jesus Christ. It's fucking stupid. So I guess, like, that story is to put to the, again, just, like, lack of knowledge in the area of where I live, I guess. Lack but then also dermatillomania, or I think the DSM term is for it is excorsion disorder. I don't know how to say it. Um, that that you wasn't in the DSM. How to pronounce things? That wasn't in the DSM until 2013, and that's the year I graduated high school. I graduated two years before you. But it's just interesting because it was seen as self self harm until I went to college. And then I started seeing things that were like, oh, you pick me too. You're not alone. This is like an obsessive thing. I'm like, wait, what? It is. Mm -hmm. you... So I told you I'm not self-harming. I told you. Uh, ironically, I'm very hungry. Um, and I ordered food and my food is here. So I'm going to grab my food real quick. Entertain the masses. Uh, okay, I'll do that. I can do that for you. Here, just one moment. One moment here. So, Meat Munster. He's a cat. He's a very nice boy. And he's sitting right there, being a Great. boy. Did we get hate rated yet? I walked away for 0.2 seconds. Oh, I thought you were going to be gone for longer. I was introducing them to monsters. It's fine. Go in introduce them. I'm not I'm not here. Bye, everyone. I'm not here. Goodbye. Well, you're back a little bit, so no, I'll you know, I'm not. No, I'm not. Just do your thing. Talk about Munster. Is that a type Munster? of cheese? Munster, yes. Munster cheese. Munster. M U E N S T E R. Like the cheese. He looks like cheese. And he also looks like a toasted marshmallow. So now we have. Oh, wow. I adjusted it and you can see me. That's awkward. Do 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 do. Here you go, buddy. Why can't you just like. <laughs> then you got a meow from him. Oh my god. What a big meow. Meow. Here's the boy. You get to see his tail. Anyway, like the cheese, because we like cheese around here. He also likes marshmallow. Um, um, he's talkative. He, he paints. He paints. Um, he made this painting. Um, a few months ago. Oh my god, that's adorable. With his own paws. I will tell you the secret. Work the paint in some dots. You put the saran wrap on top. And then you put the wet treats on the saran wrap. And then they walk around and do the licky licks. Oh my god. Um, what else to tell you about the boy? He runs the house. Um, true. He's just sitting there right now, like, just sitting, just being. 
Put that in the comments. He's the somewhere. star of my live stream, so if you aren't following me yet and you want to see more of Munster, go follow Jenny. Make sure you're following. Go follow Bye, Jenny. Bye, Jeffrey. Sir. Thanks for having my dad's name. Have a great day. Wait, that's the wrong. That's Jeffrey. Don't follow Jeffrey. He doesn't stream. Hi, bats. We can. I. Hey, I'm bats, happy with in. taking like a little break to like acknowledge people and stuff because I was. I get. I don't know why I get so anxious about talking about like eating disorders of all the. Um, I mean, it's an anxious thing to talk about. Also, I'm eating. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um. I, I was just like reading back through, and yeah, uh, Ribbon, I wasn't in the to know that it was even like abuse. I'm glad that it wasn't assumed for self harm for you as well, um, Ribbon. And hi, Kel. Kel and I had a call today. Kel has a feeling word mug, one of my best. That's awesome. By the way, those of you that don't know what I mean by that. Because you remember, we were talking about feelings. Um. It's you might turn gang if your shake is too fruity. Say what? What'd you say? Sorry, trying to talk with my mouth full. Oh, Excla true, fair. Exclamation check-in, please. I'll do that because I'm a mod. Thanks. You don't have to be mods. <laughs> Uh, for that one but um yeah feel free to check in with their they're pig and eat their hair they told me about it because they saw me picking and was like oh my gosh oh my goodness ribbon ribbon you just reminded me of something especially i think it's because you said college but there was one time this is just gonna i don't know be story time unrelated yeah, to eating story disorder. time um but in college there was one so i drank a lot in college it was like oh frick yeah drink drunk so I drank a lot in college until I stopped because I said my brain just goes all in or nothing. And um, I remember this one time, I don't know if it was my birthday or it was close to my birthday, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, I saw this girl and she had, you know, scars and stuff on her arms that looked like picking. And I think I, I like drunkenly asked her, I was like, do you pick? And she said, yeah. And I was like, did you know that you're not alone and that like other people do it too. I have this too. You really like you really really pick. And I can't remember exactly how it went, but at, after a while I was just like sitting there like we were sitting I don't know if she was crying, but I was like bawling because I think it was maybe the, one of the first people that I had met in real life that had it. And I was so, so intoxicated that it was like the most emotional moment for me. Um yeah, I guess that's kind of really just the end of the story. But Did you become friends with her? Yes. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know if we're still in contact now because it seems like when I meet friends that... When I meet friends in person, I don't keep them as long as when I meet them online. I don't know why that is. Mm. It's hard to maintain friendships. We're busy. Sure. I I'd still like to meet you online, offline at some point. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, I can meet the... I mean, my last two romantic relationships, I met them online first, but they were still in person. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's like, if I meet someone in person and not online first. Because usually uh, when you meet someone in person, it's in a particular setting. Definitely college time, so you meet a lot of people IRL. But, like, yeah, that's, that's also a very transitional point. time because, like, you know, it's not forever. You're not in college forever. You're not going to be in that area forever. Mm -hmm. You might move to a different area for a job or whatever. Or you have, like, other responsibilities. You get a different job. But online, like, our online time is our online time. You know what I mean? We always make time for our online time, which is weird to say. Um, but it's true. But so we ooh. have more time for online interactions. Now he's where he needs to be with the best angle. <laughs> so there's the boy anyway. Um. Also true, Bats. Wait, I need that mug. Where to get? Uh, 
You've picked your skin? Oh, yeah, we talked about that, Kel. Yeah. Gotten better over the years, but I still do it once in a while. Uh, scalp and cuticles. See, like, for me, okay, that's also... That, so... I don't know, I guess it's because you're eating that I'm just, like, going by the chat now. Um, the other thing for me is, like, the picking. So when I was younger, it was, like, my arms, but it was my face. Like, I've gotten really lucky somehow... It, I don't know, over the past maybe three-ish years that I haven't gotten, like, a big hole on my face. Like, it was bad, bad. But now it's more like, it, ironically, it's not my face, and so I fool people because it's on my chest and actually it's even some of, like, my crotch and stuff, and so it's almost like, SURPRISE! <laughs> so that's been hard to deal with lately. Sorry, that was really obnoxious, but that's kind of how I feel about it. So, you got to see it all. Your feelings are valid. <laughs> if I see acne, I pick. And right, it starts with acne for me, but it's like, um, one of the things that uh, Lauren, who founded the Picking Me Foundation, she uses the phrase like, you're roaming. Um, no, that is, um, 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 frick, what is it called? There's a specific word for that. What is it called? Because I wore headphones during Easter dinner because it was the first time I was hearing people eat in person for over two years and I didn't realize how sensitive I was. Like I knew I hated it, but I didn't know I... Uh, 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 we talked about it um, because it can be things even like uh, misophonia. Because it can even be things like, um, you know, if you're eating in a restaurant and you don't like the sound of, like, silverware, you can, like, lose it just by being in a restaurant. Glitter clatter? Okay. Warning, I'm turning my camera back on. I'm not eating anymore. Ah! Hello, it is I. I am satiated for the moment. I'm back. My hair chewing, I need to immediately stop doing what I'm doing again to fight or flight mode. Yeah, there's a specific word, misophonia. It used to be like that with my lower area, because I didn't like hair growing there. Wait a second. Yeah, so like my current debate actually, last summer I didn't really shave my legs because I knew I was like it was still pretty lockdown-y. But this summer I'm kind of like, man, like I, I know that I don't have to and like I'm totally fairly okay kind of confident, but... Honestly, I have to say that as they get longer, they get irritating for me. And so, um, like, yes, the hairs on my legs, like, because I don't like the wind blowing in the leg hairs. I don't know how you guys can deal with it. But anyway, so now it's been don't like a debate. I'm not, not aware of it. Yeah, you've probably been used to it forever. Um, yes. So now it's like, do I shave or not shave? Because when I shave, I'm more apt to pick, like, the bumps that mm -hmm. come with the hair shaves. And that's where I'm struggling now. Uh, Teddy, that's definitely look up misophonia. Yeah. Also, the boy is here. <gasps> Hello, boy! You look boy. like my old baby! The void boy. I miss Hello, my old baby. baby. Does this one talk? Uh, when he wants to. But not like the other one? Not on command. Not like just having a conversation back and forth. No, like if I'm standing over him, he'll be like, <laughs> "Hi, Nero. Hi. Can you say hi?" He doesn't talk. Such a baby. By the way, there's no show Sky redeems uh today, because Sky is not doing well. I don't think. I feel like he's physically injured. Uh oh. Um, because he's like hissing at all the other cats and he's just Aww. isolating himself in the bedroom sleeping or trying to sleep so i'm probably gonna take him to the vet tomorrow to see if Mark there's has a vet appointment wrong. tomorrow i'm gonna have i have to call like first thing 7 7 a.m in the morning to get a sick appointment for him because i'm concerned if he's actually physically hurt or not because he was like yelling at everyone he was just pissed off at everyone and like him and nero are, are a bonded pair so it's just wild to me that he was like that aggressive towards even Nero. Um, I thought maybe he like needed the bathroom or something because he's kind of digging around a little bit. 
but he never went to the bathroom. So I don't know. I gave him some dry food. I tried to give him some dry food. He didn't want it. Um, and he hasn't really bothered me a lot today. Um, so I think he got hurt in a fight or something. Someone bit him in the butt because he seemed very sensitive in like the hind quarters. One of the area. other cats, or do they go outside? None of my cats go outside without, you know, Sticky escapes outside every so often. Um, that's about it. Um, I mean, we're also in the midst of moving, so we just moved a bunch of boxes out here in the living room. Yeah, the, the fact that he hasn't bothered me is the biggest red flag, that's true. Um, we just moved a bunch of boxes out, out in the living room, so that could also, like, agitate him. Oh, like, that, the environment's that, getting more and more cluttered out here. Um, and also, I brought out all the cat boxes, so maybe he's just on edge because of that. And like, he's going there are that. a lot of things out of place right now. This is not normal. I don't like yeah. But also, he seems very particularly agitated about his back. So, it could be stress, but it also could be, like, he physically is hurt. Um, he doesn't seem to be limping, but his tail was, like, so down. So, I don't know. Maybe I should just hide the cat box or something, and that'll make him feel better. But, like, we have to pack all of our shit, so unfortunately, it's just gonna be, like, out here for the moment. It's just gonna be how it is, unfortunately. Um, we're going through it all. I'm packing it all. I meant to pack the Xbox today in that box. Oh well, messed up. More kitty. Uh, yeah, we have four here. Teddy, Teddy, I want to, not that my permission matters, but like, I, like I said, I ate with noise canceling headphones on for the first time uh, during a family dinner on Easter. He's not one. Uh, in, because I, the moment I sat down and people eating I'm like nope I'm not sitting here through this because I'm just gonna be waiting to be done and it was very interesting because I was able to sit there and I didn't have the heebie-jeebies I guess um so I definitely understand you and also I hear that they might find it to be rude I hope that I, I don't know if you're around a lot of these mental health spaces much Teddy but I hope that you can maybe find a kind of resource to well, granted, I know that they also try to cure your depression and stuff, but there are, like, I feel like resources out there that can more or less... I, I like to share resources that feel like they're backing me up with my boundaries. Not to say that you have to have a reason for boundaries, but, like, maybe that... I don't know. Maybe that... What do you mean they try to cure your depression? I thought that was what, like, the mom tried to force him to just, like, you know, be better. Or did I misunderstand at the beginning of stream? Oh, well, yeah, but, uh... Well, so I meant, like, I realized, like, oh, that may not be as effective as I was thinking. But anyway, like, what I was saying is, like, idea. so, like, for my parents, when I do certain things that are, like, abnormal, like, when I wasn't talking with my parents as much, or this or that or the other thing, try to send them like resources kind of based on this is why I've decided to set this boundary kind of thing. Right. No, I hope you I hope you explore your options basically. So I think what you're saying. Yes. It's always good. It's always good to explore your options and whatever holistically is going to work for you. Yes. Always discuss with your doctor and a trusted professional. Yes. Okay, I need uh, to turn I don't, I don't think Sky is limping, by the way. Also, I can hear myself. Oop. I'm turning off my noise suppression. Wait. Uh, it, it, it's been off this whole time. Oops. No, I was, I was saying that, uh... That I could hear myself. That's it. Well... That's probably because... Have you been able to hear yourself this whole time? Nope, just there, right there at the end, your sentence oh. before. Uh, yeah, I know your mom tried her best, right? And currently, my boyfriend doesn't mind the headphones, and that's awesome. I'm glad that you're in a situation that's much better for you. And I hope that that is helping your depression, that you're in just a better environment. Time to ADHD, use while by stream to support myself into productivity. Yes, good job, good job, Ruben. I'm proud of you. Use use my random ramblings to force yourself into productivity. Because after the talk, we're probably going to play Stardew Valley. Because I want to play Stardew Valley. Um, hi. What's up? What's up? What's wrong? What's happened? What's happening? Well, I muted myself because my typing is loud. Oh, no. And also, when you said my typing was loud, I was 
one finger at a time, trying to do it as softly as I could. I, I heard that. <laughs> Hi. So, where the fuck were we? Picking. Yes. Let's talk about it. Picking is very common, it seems. Yeah, that's... I... I think that that's why I kind of get, like, excited now when I... Not that... To get excited, but, like, you know... It, it's like, oh, shit, you have this thing. Such a relief to... And to know that, like, there's even, like, a word for it even, kind of. And so I get excited. It, it's almost like I'm excited for someone else's relief. Like, I hope that you... Not that, you know, other people have... I, same feelings about it as I do. I guess it's like I'm. I preemptively like imagine the relief that they might be feeling. Like, for real? I'm not out of nowhere and most. No, you're not just a, weird, a weirdo alien. Who's, yeah. <laughs> this is a thing. Um. Also, I need to get up and stretch because my back is Go. hurting. It, do it. it. It's disappointing me Goodbye. to the point where. I can't pay attention. Ugh. All right, everyone. This is the seventh, bottom of the seventh stretch break. Everyone, get up and stretch a little bit. Move your bodies. Roll your shoulders. Move your arms. Move your legs. Stretch what? out. I hate it when my body hurts because move my body hurts from everything else. Stay with me, everyone. There's actually a specific exercise what I was talking about before with like the relaxing your muscle meditation. Ouch. Not just the, like the body check meditation, but it's just kind of like you literally just like collapse yourself. You're just like, Bleh. and then you slowly but surely work yourself back up until you're talking normally and have better posture than before. Honestly, when I found Jen's stream, it was a relief for me because it actually helped me do less. Don't listen, it's nice to be able to relate. Yeah, talking about it definitely can be very therapeutic because not only you're able to relate to her, but you're also able to be like, you know what, we can support each other through this. Even if even if just like uh, you know, not not directly, but like just like through the power of the internet kind of thing. Of just like whoosh. Ah, <gasps> kitty. Kitty go jump? Oh, there's a kitty. It's nice to be able to I agree. Bats, I love that dance. Emo, that's great. I found baby David with a bowl cut, going through a bunch of David's mom's stuff and found photos. Oh, no. And again, you saved the day. Took my meds. Thanks, Bob. Also, hello, everyone. Yes, take your meds, people. If it's time to take your meds, take your meds. My posture is horrible. It's amazing Mind what the internet you. can do. It is. Uh, I, I, like living living uh, vicariously through a streamer can be really, really helpful sometimes. It's just like, you know, you're trying to, you know, just like get yourself in a better mindset and stuff. And if like relating with another streamer makes you feel better about your own situation, then by all means, go for it. Hi, Cypress. Welcome in. How you doing? After the third time I got hit by a car. The third time you got hit by a car. <laughs> what the fuck? I think you told me about this before, but still, what the fuck? It's actually super uncomfortable and painful to sit straight. Understandable. He has such a sweet little baby cat, man. Yes, I love him. He has a baby. Oh, he fell asleep. <gasps> fall asleep. Go to sleep, little kitty. He's so awake right now. Yeah, boy. I don't also, know why he's over here. I think it's because, like, like the other day I was waiting. It was, like, 8.30, and he was coming over here and meowing at me. Man, he really knows when I'm supposed to go to bed. But sometimes I guess it's, like, he really knows that I need to go to bed so that I can wake up and uh, feed him as soon as, you know, I wake up. <laughs> 
Teddy, if you if you if you have a phobia of cars, I wouldn't be surprised. Like Jesus fucking Christ. Teddy, may, maybe avoid avoid cars in your life from now on. Good lord. Um. Sorry. I guess I see people talk about chronic pain, and I'm grateful that I don't have anything that it's like what people complain about and and deal with and. At the same time, sometimes when I do get hit with pain, I feel like I have. I bet this threshold is nothing like literally anyone else's, and here I am, like, I gotta go home, I gotta go to bed. Doesn't feel good. I mean, Jenny, again, like you're allowed to have your struggles. You're allowed to, you know, complain about stuff, complain about what you go through. Like, it's valid, you know. I suppose one could say, like, ah, oh, yes, XYZ's pain is objectively worse than this other person's pain, but that's not helpful. This isn't the oppression Olympics here, you know? That's your pain is still valid. Your your struggle is still valid, even if you don't think it is, but it is. You know? And it's okay. It's okay to complain. I'm giving you the platform. Not gonna use it. <laughs> is the topic today, uh... Eating disorders, yes, we are talking about eating disorders, but we're also talking about picking and body repetitive kind of disorders because that's what things that Jenny has had experiences with. And now you can't get the train, yeah. Boat, bus, bicycle, walking. These feet think... were made for walking. This walking I, is what they I do. I do not have any sound on. I shouldn't. Uh, mm -hmm. yes, I have sound. <clears throat> this is Wave by The Midnight, uh, which is a band. I have Spotify in the background. It's at like 30% right now. Yeah, it sounds like an ad, doesn't it? <laughs> That's an, a really interesting question, though, that Cypress I love Cypress's, has. yeah. Do you think COVID impacts eating disorders more or less with the taste, with loss of taste slash smells for many people? I don't know, honestly. It, I'm not it, sure. In fact, I really, almost, like, I can't even, like, make my brain be like, put your shoes in the other person right now type thing, because I haven't had COVID, and I have never lost my sense of smell or taste. And so, with the way that my, you know, cravings and the way that I operate works, I would be very interested to see what does happen. Do I crave? Will I crave mm -hmm. if I can't taste it? Is it the texture of eating the freaking peach rings that I eat every night? Maybe. Regardless of whether I can taste it? I think it definitely might come to a point where it's just like people, because if people are, again, you know, going back <laughs> to the laxative sort story that you had, uh, just to recap for folks who are coming in, uh, effectively what has happened was that Jenny went through experience at a very early age where her doctor told her that she's full of shit because of like gastro problems and they had her take laxatives. So then from then on, she started using laxatives basically every single day. Um, and it was like two part, one part was like, oh, I should just use this for my health because I have to get all the shit out of me. And two, oh, well, hey, I'm also gonna lose weight along the way. So, hey, why not? Um, and it was effectively abuse, but not recognized abuse. Um, but it wasn't until like college you took a class and it was, and they were talking about laxatives and how they can be super harmful and eat, used in eating disorders that you were just like, oh, shit, that's me. I should stop. <laughs> I just laughed that you said shit because that was, you know, <laughs> the moral of the topical, story. Topical, yeah. Um, so, so I think in the same way when people are brought to attention about something, so if they lose their taste of smell, uh, they might like chase the dragon say so to speak i hate to use that expression here but like you know they might no try that to makes sense it's like i'm eating because yeah. like maybe this one time it will it. taste yeah like you want to get something out of it so so it could definitely impact that uh impact me when i had covid it was so easy not to eat after i got my taste back interesting it was that is e easy not to eat ever since i got covid i absolutely hate fried eggs That's i hate eggs all forms I can have eggs occasionally. It's weird. I avoid potato salad lost... in case there's an egg in it. As long, someone who's lost my taste and smell for three days, I still felt hungry. It was like ghost tasting. Interesting. Hi, Vroom. Yeah, Vroom. I would Welcome expect in. to feel hungry, but like for me at least, 
as a binger, would I hit still like, is it, is there now going to be like, you know, behavior, comfort behavior from even just like the pressure and feeling of yeah. eating the textured food, even if I can't taste it, or will I be able to get through my night and not be like, I need to eat this candy still? Because like, I absolutely ha essentially have a routine at this point that I go back and forth on deciding whether or not I should or shouldn't break it because it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But back to the bigger topic. What I mean by routine is I have about six peach rings and about six chocolate peanut butter cookies, the, the Girl Scout kind, but from Aldi, and I put them in my freezer. And that's that. And then if I don't have those things, I might rotate what I get. But it's like I don't go without every – like when I went to my parents' is I took candy in case they didn't have it. Yeah. Um, I know for people that have lost their taste of smell and taste, it taste food becomes – taste and smell i mean the two are very linked actually um but like food becomes more about like the texture experience than it becomes about the taste you know certain things don't smell the same more anymore after i got covid that's interesting see these kind of effects of covid uh really need to be studied and really need to be examined about like what's going on here and without smell you can't taste much exactly exactly i was lucky that it was only three days but for longer i'd definitely still be eating uh while i had covid yeah I have not found anyone who used laxatives as an abuse, but when I was in hairdressing, my boss told me I was bigger than the other girls and I didn't want to damage my teeth, so I started abusing laxatives. Wow, Megs, I didn't know that about you. Um, because you're not dealing with the stomach acid and stuff in your mouth, so... Right. So but like, like, once I did stomach. learn about it, I was like, oh, I definitely like wasn't intentionally doing it, but I definitely was abusing it. No wonder I didn't try the other things. I already right. kind of was. Right, and you can definitely hurt yourself the other way say so to speak um, um so ribbon said i was also the kind of person who was like maybe time it'll come back and it i know we talked about this like right because i was like you know you said chasing the dra dragon or mm -hmm. keeping eating it and it made me think that ribbon since you also pick i wonder if there is i feel like there's got to be like similar compulsions in a certain way somehow because it's the same thing with picking at least for me even if it's like something that I know isn't gonna like give me something, it's like you gotta dig because it's like, no, this little thing here has to be out of like, I don't know what this is. It's probably part of my skin, but it has to come out. And then it's like, you know, someone tells you to stop. At least for me, when I was told to stop, it's like, I at least have to finish what I'm working on. Um, but it's, it's interesting because it's like, oh, maybe this time it'll come back. I wonder if it's a similar thing to like, maybe this time will be the time that it pops the way that I want it to. Uh, yeah. I, I think there is because, you know, it's all in the same kind of category of, like, OCD kind of disorders. Of it's, a compu it's you get a obsessive, you know, whatever drive to pick or obsessive need to control your food or whatever. And then the compulsion is that you either control your food or you pick or whatever it is. So same thing. Well, that's a fair point too, just yeah, in yeah. itself. All in the same vein of uh, mentality, you know. Then we were put on meds that made us gain so much weight we haven't still been able to shift it in a healthy way, which of course brings our previous thoughts of laxatives. It's a vicious cycle. That is a vicious cycle. Uh, Megs, real fucking quick. Uh, you wanna come on Mental Health Monday next week? <laughs> I have no guests next week. I'm panicking. And I would love it if you could add on to what I didn't really talk about. <laughs> it's okay if, if you can't, but like, I am looking for a guest. You're in? All right, fuck yeah. I know I know you're Australian time, so we have to DM me on the discords and we'll talk about it. We'll talk. We'll chit chat. Um, but yeah, next week, Monday, Megs is on, I guess. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah. The fish cycle fucking sucks. It's definitely dealt with bringing binging before in diet pills tea in high school, but I gave that up when it made me feel so sick one day. It's awesome that you give it up. I'll eat when I'm nervous or sad. Yeah, the, the emotional eating. Oh my god, can we talk about emotional eating? Oh. We man. can, but I'm gonna hear you more than anything else because whenever I've tried to even adjust or address the freaking eating disorder, it's like no feelings, no emotions, nothing like. I cannot find reasonable trip like not re not that things are unreasonable, but I cannot tie my eating back to things. Like yeah, I might eat when I'm emotional, but I eat when I'm not emotional too. So and that's not to say anything. It, I'm just saying that we can definitely talk about it. But I I have less awareness of mine 
because I just eat all the time. No matter what. Except for the one year that I didn't. Does that work for you now? Is that Do you feel like you're in a healthy spot with, with like allowing yourself to eat whenever you feel hungry? Yes. Um, not that, well, like before when I didn't eat, it wasn't by like choice, actually. It, it was- mm -hmm. It was like forced. I, like it was stress i think mm -hmm. all of a sudden i just like nothing i didn't want anything nothing tasted good i was gagging everything up and i, don't, I think it was like it's it's in the year of the worst year of my life or whatever and so that happened but however on the other side of it and that's why i think i said at the beginning that i kind of like my stomach shrank for the first time after always eating as much as i had eaten one year of whatever all the things happened and i didn't have an appetite and I have had a little bit more because I get sick easier now. Like, I can't eat, I don't know, yeah, I just, I can't eat junk. Like, I eat smaller portions now. I'm trying to remember how that related to the question. My air turned on, so I got distracted. Emotional eating. Oh, I was emotional talk eating, about it yeah. a little bit. Um, my thing with emotional eating is that, you know, sometimes we just do it automatically. It's just like we feel a certain type of way. And it's kind of like almost encouraged a little bit of like, oh, you know, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like heartbroken, whatever, you're feeling sad, you know, get some ice cream, get your Godiva, whatever, you know, eat your chocolate, basically, to feel better. And chocolate does have like properties to like make you feel better, but like, it's in fact, <laughs> Snickers is almost like guilty of that. Yeah, that's true. They kind of use that in advertisements, don't they? You're not They're yourself right when you're hungry. Eat a Snickers. Literally. <laughs> like that's their slogan. Oh, I remember the other part in terms of like control. I eating when I'm supposed to because I think you had taken it that I had chosen not to eat. Or, but anyway. After that happened, though, I have been able to have more control over, like, because I lost the weight. Like, I lost weight even though I wasn't intentionally trying to. I just wasn't mm -hmm. eating. And so then at that point, that was also an interesting struggle, too, because I lost weight. And I was like, uh-oh, I'm getting my appetite back. But I lost all this weight when I didn't have an appetite. So maybe that's where it comes in. Like, that's where more of the struggle of like getting eating when you're supposed to so yes i do um i'm uh, more intentional now i went through a period where like i got to the point where i had to i can accept that you know even if my diet is like frozen chicken nuggets and chicken strips and corn dogs and other things and i try to sprinkle in some lettuce with the tacos that i'm currently eating this week but in all reality if i want to try to keep my well i need to eat every day maybe more than once a day and so that means i need to choose that i can more easily get into my body no matter i don't want to say no matter the the nutritional content but kind of no matter the nutritional content i mean i think it's important to allow yourself to eat consistently rather than like guilt and shame yourself for not eating the healthiest that you could be you know what i mean does that make sense? Like, you want to still be able to eat, but you don't also want to shame yourself and be like, oh, I'm eating chicken nuggets again. Like, what the fuck am I doing with myself? Like, don't do that to yourself. You're still eating, and that's good. Like, you're having, you're, you're, you're working towards a healthy relationship with food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm not as mad about the fact that I keep eating frozen food. I just right. can give myself a pat on the back for being able to finish the bag of lettuce that I did choose to buy the other day. And while continuing to eat frozen food, because I know I'm trying. Exactly. Uh, welcome in, Clarity Coach Mel. How are you doing today? I hope you're well. I hope you're taking care of yourself out there. Uh, welcome into our community. This is Mental Health Monday, where we're interviewing uh, Jenny Fur on her experiences with eating disorders and also picking. Welcome in, welcome in. Um, I'm doing quite okay today. Uh, feel free to also check in as well with us in the little poll there and feel free to ask any questions that you have on this topic and more. Um, yeah, Megs does the opposite uh, with the emotional eating and don't eat when I'm down. And I kind of do that a little bit myself. I kind of like uh, will, will like restrict myself a bit and it's not a good thing. 
Uh, but like when I'm feeling really shitty about myself, I'll be like, oh, I don't deserve to eat, which is not true. Like, of course I deserve to eat. Um, everyone deserves to eat. Everyone deserves love. Everyone deserves to do the things that they need to do to take care of themselves. Uh, Did you have thoughts though on emotional eating? Cause you were like, yes. Let's yeah. Uh, like my my thoughts on emotional eating were basically that, um, I think people do it. I think people aren't aware. Again, it's one of these awareness. Are you aware Disordered of it? Eating. You know, are you aware of a disordered eating thing? Or it's like, you know, I feel stressed, so I'm going to eat. I feel sad, so I'm going to eat. I feel, you know, whatever emotion, so I'm going to eat. You know, that, that's not necessarily a good thing because if you're tying emotions to eating and also here's the other thing is if you're judging what you eat or if you're like, oh, I've been, I've, I've been good today so I can have this thing for myself that in of itself is also a judgment and it's an attempt, yeah. an attempt mm -hmm. to control what you're eating um you know and i'm not saying you know oh you should do the complete polar, polar opposite polar. of this and just eat everything yeah. all the time and don't you know think yeah. about nutrition or whatever that's not what i'm saying at all um i'm trying to say the, the purpose of trying to you know overcome an eating disorder is to have a healthy relationship with food where you're allowing yourself to eat you're in control of your choices, you're aware of your choices, but you're not aware to the point where like you're hyper fixating on them and they're causing like super stress and anxiety in your life. Um, and you're working together, you know, with someone who can help you talk with, talk through with you about these things. Um, but yeah, sounds like you uh, like routines have, have, sounds like you like routines. Have you tried an eating routine, like set times throughout the day? Do you eat and also set portion sizes? Good question, Jenny. Yeah, I am learning that I'm more routine oriented, and it's funny because like that's the the kind of root and main point of why I even started Breakfast and Feelings Check In. It was acknowledging mm -hmm. that not just me, but others have trouble remembering to eat, or choosing to eat, or not getting distracted, or whatever. And so I'm not gonna lie, I literally eat my breakfast on your streams sometimes. <laughs> So, like, that's, like, I, I kind of set myself up for that, and I have been able to stack habits on top of that. Like, now I walk in the morning with Munster in his stroller. Not always now because of, because I traumatized him by taking him home, but we're getting back. And, but I, like, I changed my entire, like, waking hours. Not by choice. It kind of naturally happened, but now I'm awake in the morning, and so I eat, and I do the things and get ready and, like, have time before, which I never did, um... But like the main point of that was to like make sure that I eat. And interestingly enough, it's not that I want to use my stream to guilt me into eating, but it is a good reminder that if I'm trying to model, that I should eat too. I don't want to get caught someone saying, well, what'd you have for breakfast, Jenny? Um, well, I didn't eat yet. That's not fair. I think, so it's not, I, I think it's not like I'm forcing it. myself, but I'm yeah, trying. Yeah, you're not forcing yourself. In. You're doing it in a wholesome and healthy way of just kind of like, okay, it is breakfast, I just started my day, I woke up, I should probably eat something, you know, so I can put, you know, I think of like food as fuel, food as fuel. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You have to eat in order to be functional, because if you don't eat, then, you know, a bunch of other th bad things can happen, up to including like just passing out straight up for like no sugar intake, you know, um, but you just feel irritable, you don't feel, you don't feel well, humans do require caloric intake along with nutritional intake um but more importantly you just require something so again this again and i agree with ribbon here and ribbon was agreeing with me is that you know it doesn't really you know it's more important that you eat more than you eat healthily and if you aren't eating at least put food in regardless of what it is and putting in a healthy and healthy label on it is what hinders one from eating in general so if you're judging all your like oh frozen meal choices it's like well at least i'm having something so mm -hmm. And that's like kind of been my biggest accomplishment probably over the past six months because I may be eating a whole freaking jar of peanut butter, but I'm eating more regularly instead of trying to see how long I can go before I get too, too much. Yeah. Eating the same things every morning. Yeah. If, if you're okay and comfortable with eating the same things every morning, I'm looking for my water. I'm not finding it. Uh, but if you're comfortable with eating the same things every morning, that can definitely work for you. Um, Ribbon um, had said 
my appetite disappears when I'm depressed, so it's an issue I was dealing with for a while. But once I got on my Prozac, my appetite came back. I don't know if it's necessarily disordered eating. And what I was thinking was, I don't, I don't necessarily think that I would want to say disordered eating. I mean, maybe you could say that a side effect caused eating issues of the med, like, or well, no, it wasn't a side effect because it wasn't until you were on the med. But anyway, um, I think that the when it becomes disordered eating is when you start getting your appetite back and you're like well wait a second my body's not doing what it was doing when this happened and so i need to get back to that and now you're like because for me when i lost my appetite I was starting to I had to start to battle myself like I, I just said how long can i go without being hungry when my appetite started coming back i was like battling with the whole like okay well now that you have an appetite you should probably eat and well, I lost all this weight while I didn't have the appetite. Why is it coming back? Can I eat less than this? And then when you're trying to, like, I guess kind of control in that regard, that's when it's, the like, the control that you kind of talked about, Waba. And also, to Zypress, I'm going to be right back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to use some of the things every morning, so it's a chain right. Question, what would, it, would it, what would be a good way to increase food intake for a person who isn't routine-oriented? Wait, you have that? You actually have it. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Let me turn off my thingy. Does this help you? Um, it, it's interesting because yes and no. You, you don't get the same pain stimulation that you get when using like the tools or just like, you know, the sensation that you get, the satisfaction that you get from like, you know, getting it out. And there is, there's definite pain. Um, sometimes I have to, it, it takes a lot of intention to choose to use this instead of picking myself, I guess. Also, I have trypophobia, so sometimes I have to stay away from it for a while. Oh god, I'm so sorry about my, my birthday subathon. It's okay, it's okay. Um, but it... Thinking of that. I'm trying to use it more. Um, and I've, I've read, I, you know, I've read mixed reviews from people too about it. It's like, some are like, well, it kind of helps, some are like, kind of doesn't. I think that a lot of it has to do, like, there's... The, and, and the eating as well, which they even put a uh, disclaimer on there about like this stuff that it's like, do not eat this. And so it's like, if it is habit for you to eat it, please don't eat it. Um, and so, yeah, that part, like there's, there's, there's still things that you get from, I guess, unfortunately, like, like the feeling of cutting through layers, for example. I don't know if anyone can really relate to that, but if you... Mm -hmm dig in enough you know i feel like it's not but it is interesting because there are so many different sizes of holes that it can keep you busy if you try to be focused and can get yourself focused on it it can keep you busy so that's a positive if it's like oh i've started doing it during therapy actually that's what mm -hmm. i've started bringing because it was hard for me to like in court because it was like i'd just rather pick my like it was very hard I started using it during therapy, actually, yeah. because I, t I used the word roam before, but it's like, even on stream, if you guys see me, like, rubbing my shoulders or ever doing things like this, this is me, like, this is habit picking because I'm roaming my skin looking for bump or blemish or thing to then start and mess with. Um, and so to have this and be messing with this makes a difference. And yeah, pops, I have a, I have a pop socket, too, that... You can see that it's very well worn because all I do is everything with it. Um, and I have like, you know, the Picking Me Foundation has a whole fiddle pack, which is just like a billion different types of fiddly thingies. From... That's great. Yeah, no, it, it really is. Um, and I'll give you more information on that in a bit if you want to just like have it as a resource. Sure. But like, yes, please. One of my favorite things, um, they gave you, um, guitar pick thingies mm -hmm. to wear on your fingers, or it's my favorite part. 
There's a question from Teddy that I want to answer. Go ahead. Just before we get away from it, because I saw it and it's a good question. What would be a good way to increase food intake for a person who isn't, who isn't routine oriented? Um, and I think I have a weird answer for this, and this is not like an, it looks like a condom. <laughs> This isn't an answer that like is what research or anything. This is just my initial like gut reaction about this question is buy more snacks. Buy snacks that you like and you, you enjoy to snack on because like thinking about it like snacks are just something that you just like, you snack on. You snack on snacks. I know that sounds so simple, but like, you know, you're going to if you if you're going to spend time snacking, get something, get those snacks, have them in the house so that way you're able to eat a bit more, you know, and intake a bit more. And it's not a, it's not up to a routine. Snack is just like whenever the hell you feel about it. Uh, we can go to Zypress's question now. But if anyone else has a answer for Teddy, that'd be awesome. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was trying to find the question. It's fine. Uh, um, and then Zypress asked this before, I think, in a VC. Uh, talk about picking uh, would dipping or covering your skins in candle wax in the place you're picking help with being able to pick but not damage your skin maybe and I think that that's a really interesting suggestion that I am interested in I guess like pursuing or seeing if anyone else has like tried it because that's I don't know that's really thoughtful the only thing I guess I would think is that there is again still both you know if you do eat it and then also the pain or the whatever you get that comes from peeling it i guess because it's like my pain threshold is next to nothing except for when it comes to picking my skin because like you know i've i've gotten really deep before <laughs> um also yeah it's a finger condom but also yes. just another thing that they included in the fiddle pack, but I like to show uh, it up. Jenny, this whole like talk is making me so conscious of all my little bumps in my arm, because I used to pick at these, like, excessively, but I don't do it so much anymore. I just often, like, scratch at them, but, like, I don't really try to... I'll try not to eat them. But, like, yeah. I'm glad. Sure. You're making I'm me glad. aware. Because, like, I did used to do shit like this. Have a good night, Teddy. Of course. Have, have a good one. Take care, take care. The boy. Bye, Teddy. Bye. Oh. oh. Okay, you were just walking by. Sorry. He's so large and thick. Thick boy. I love him. He's like, Mom, you're not in your bed. This. The cat wanted to say goodbye. That's cute. He just walked over me and. Okay. Yeah, I like his ribbon. What ribbon does? Painting my nails. Sorts helps me from keeping picking the cuticles. Also doing at home manicures helps because picking fingers transcending across injury. Reusing cucumbers is the more safer option, weirdly enough. Yes, uh, I believe that. Thing. And I actually, it's funny because I bought cuticle clippers so like you, a couple weeks ago. I was like desperate. I was like, my cuticles are hurting so bad. And I literally also, know that I cannot pull at them. I mean, um, also, sorry, you keep trying to talk. I was going to say the alternative of candle wax could just be like, you know, like glue. Because like, Yeah, that, that glue, thought popped in my head too. But I feel like... Glue. Glue might be a little more harsh than wax on the hair, though. That's true. I mean, I, I meant, like, just on, like, your skin on your arm or something, but... I have arm hair, but yes, I hear you. Um, Kel also mentioned uh, putting on acrylic nails and can't pick as well, so the skin tends to heal up and I don't find places to pick anymore. And, you know, a lot of people say that acrylic nails or doing their nails help them, and I'm sitting here like, man, I would get mad at the places I would get my nails done. Like, why does their glue not last on my fingernails? And it's because the nails didn't stop me, and I would end up putting so much pressure on the stupid freaking acrylic nails that they would pop off within a week or two from the back because I'm using the front, and so it would, like, wild. always pop up on the back and just... <sighs> so acrylic nails don't work well for me. Rip. Yeah, EMC. I hate the texture of glue on my skin. It would kind of make me pick more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AMC nails? Mm-hmm. What's that? A movie AMC theater? AMC is like, it's like powder. It's like dip powder. Oh, uh, no, I would definitely get dip nails. I just... 
You, when it's I like, can't it's sleep, like, I guess it's my... very specific technique. Oh. Um, I think it's called ANC ribbon. It stands for Amazing Nail Creations. It's like a powder polish turned into polish. Yeah. Welcome back, Megs. No problem. But yeah. Uh, for anyone who's new here, feel free to ask any questions if you want to by typing Q colon and then space and then your question. Uh, we like to talk on mental health often. This is Mental Health Monday, and I usually stream four days a week, Friday through Monday, usually late night EST, Final Fantasy Friday, although I don't fucking know what I'm doing Friday because although my, new, my, my computer is going to be back, so maybe theoretically I'll be able to get back to it. Um... Saturday Sims, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, what else do we do? Fuck me. Um, Saturday Sims, Dungeons and Dragons, Sunday Stardew, and Mental Health Monday. But we always talk about mental health here, so welcome in. Um, I got it for my sister's wedding, even after trimming with nail clippers for work. They last like two months. That's awesome. Couldn't pick any nails at all while wearing them. Oof. That's also That's really kind of a nice. good thing. That's really nice. How are you doing, Jenny? My back is starting to hurt again. It's only when I am. Only when I am. Okay. Back is starting think... to hurt. Oh no. Yeah, I think I'm starting to fade. Okay. Do you want to go? Does anyone else have any other little... Yes. Questions, comments, oh. concerns for Jenny. As much as I like to stay up as late as I can. Whoa, what is happening? I found my little melodica. <laughs> I wasn't here from the start. Where do you normally pick? So, Cyprus, see my arms here? Um, my legs are doing a little bit better, but lately, over the past couple years, it's been my chest, actually, and, and my crotch. Um, but my arms seem to be kind of never-ending. I'm not as flexible to get the ones on my back and shoulders. The problem I have is I mostly eat ra instant ramen, like higher end, but still a lot of soup, so it's not the healthiest. Oh no, that's okay, Mugus. That's You're okay. Fine, um, and and right again, like I feel like for me, similarly, um, I have been working to be okay with and just like, oh, I'm having something. Like when I ate beef stroganoff like three times in like a week and a half. I think I was like, oh, I'm eating a lot of salt. Let's see how much water I can drink. Mm -hmm. Because it's already happening. I can make a change if I'm too lazy to make a change or whatever. The best thing I can do, I think, is increase my water. So I guess, I don't know. That's not like the healthiest digestion, I guess. Honestly, but I, I eat a lot of ramen myself. I eat a lot of ramen, but what I do is I add things to that ramen, so I add meats, I eat, I add vegetables to it, so I try to make it more kind of nutritious robust. for myself and more robust. So that way, even if I'm only eating ramen all day, I still feel okay and I still feel good. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing to eat a, you know, mostly like liquid diet, like that you're getting a lot of water in. You know, I'll bet, you know, you have to give yourself credit there. You're getting a lot of hydration and I'll bet salty hydration, but hydration all the same. Uh, but you just have to be careful when it comes to like diet changes. If you all of a sudden switch to eating more solid food, then, you know, your gut is just going to like be very unhappy with that. So if you're used to eating ramen, by all means, keep doing it. But like make sure you're adding stuff in, um, I think, is what you want to try to focus on. Or if you want to get away from soup, you know, try introducing a small snack that is something that is not soup based instead of more solid food trouble with proteins i hear that so you heard most of Sorry, our response my, then rugus uh, hopefully my, my my roommate literally just yelled something so i don't know what's happening Mugus, we were just responding so hopefully you heard most of it because i saw that you commented on the vegetables part um, Zypris, does covering them help? Like long sleeve shirts, are you unable to see it? So there's been things like, you know, the person that I ta I've been talking about, the person that founded the Picking Me Foundation, I she says that she has all of the mirrors in her um, house covered. And I can't do that because I do happen to like looking at myself, even if I can 
I try not to pick, but I still enjoy looking at myself sometimes. Um, but ironically, today I was actually on a phone call with Kel and I was sitting out here baking because I was wearing a long sleeve shirt. I wore this on stream and then I went back to my room and then I started picking and I was like, I can't have my arms bare all day today. I need to put, like I went and I put bacitracin and a band-aid on and uh, put a long sleeve shirt on, but then it got to 91 degrees and here I am again, but- Can you, can you post the picking foundation, please? Cause yeah. I was gonna add as a command. Yeah. Actually you can do command add picking and I'm then really just link hard. it. Uh, even spaghetti is good if you're trying to switch. Yes, exactly, because it's more liquidy, more like thinner food. I've heard food moments where I'll eat one type of food for so long that I'll eventually gag at the thought of eating it ever again. Does anyone else do this? Yes, there's something called safe food and same food. Uh, there's already a command with picking. Oh shit. Same. Jenny. Jenny, Same we website. added this. We must have added this last time. Oh, fuck. How funny. Look at us forgetting our commands. This is great. Wait, there's a pit. Yeah, so the Picking Me Foundation was founded by someone named Laura. And this was what I was talking about last time. Uh, or Lauren, not Laura. Uh, and she, she contracted MRSA with an infection on her leg, and she almost lost her right. leg. I remember the Picking story. Me. Um, and, and really quickly, I will um, read some of the, because I, the quote, lesser known effects of dermatillomania. So you've got the skin infections like blisters, sepsis, um, MRSA, um, staph, but you can also get pulled tendons, pinched nerves, and arthritis because we are pushing and like we're balling things up when we're cert like doing certain things or, um, Blood loss, <laughs> muscle fatigue, also you wouldn't assume, but if you're hunched over and you're like, you know, you're picking at your feet or you're picking at your legs, I'm, and I think that's probably why I have a lot of the back problems I do, but you can like get muscle fatigue because of that. Um, abscesses, sleep losses because of just like the time blindness, um, iron deficiency, tissue damage, cellulitis. Okay. That's that. I've, I've done that. I have to hear Baxitracin. Every time I hear Baxitracin, I think of Big Hero 6. That makes mm -hmm. me happy. Hi, baby! Look at all the licks! This is the baby that's yelling at everyone today. Can he yell at us? I've gotten headaches after picking my scalp. Yup, yup. Um, let me know if you need that website again. But the founder is really super cool and likes to do a lot of, um, like a lot of like outreach and things. So if you've ever wanted to like, you know, talk about your story or post or anything, there's a lot of community building, um, in, within the Picking Me Foundation. Um. Yes. I believe in the DSM, technically it is not. Yes. Which I've uh, never ever understood. Eating disorders and uh, body picking disorders are all under, because uh, because okay. So think about what OCD is. Sorry, I know I'm like overblown right now because I turned the mic up so you could hear Sky. Um, so what OCD is? So obsessive obsessive compulsive disorder, um, is you know. A thing where you have certain obsessions about usually it's in the form of like thoughts about like xyz thing whatever you, whoa okay he's definitely hurt something there that's not good um i don't, I don't know what to do about that um because i had a really long talk about it with and she was like, it's yeah, technically not. I really need to take him to the vet tomorrow. Um, okay, so sorry. Um, so OCD, over, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, is someone who has a series of obsessive thoughts. Um, that's that it, that's it. Then... It's because there's not necessarily obsessive thoughts so much as the compulsion. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, you don't, you don't need the obsessive thoughts, but if you have some sort of compulsive behavior... 
um, that you're doing over and over again, you know, that can be a classified type of OCD. Um, so for instance, I thought um, you had to have the follow through, like you had to have both the pre and the po the reaction uh, for it to be considered. And that's why it's not. No, technically, um, you can have And that's one. why the model is so messed up anyway. Yeah, I, again, we don't fucking praise the DSM for its <sighs> accuracy. Um, it's not the fucking Bible. Um, but there is technically, like, there's, there's, you know, like, diagnostic, you know, leeway. Ugh, I hate that word. But, they can definitely you know. co-occur. Oh, uh, yeah, they can co-occur. But basically what I'm saying is that in, like, a typical presentation of OCD, you have obsessive... Uh, thoughts or feelings about some XYZ thing, and then you proceed to do XYZ compulsions in order to ease your anxiety. So you might have anxiety about a thing, and then you do the thing to ease the anxiety. So picking could be <laughs> obsessively, like, you know, searching arms or searching chest, whatever area for thing to pick, and then the compulsion is that you pick it and then you eat it or whatever, and that relieves the anxiety of obsessing about the thing. So, yes. It is a form of OCD, or it's within the same purview of OCD. What? Yeah, I'm concerned about Sky for sure. Did That's you hear the first time he came at me today. So. Aww. Well, I'm I'm if we want to do like a say wrap things up for Jen, say bye, and then you do like a B B check on him a little more intentionally. Yes, I'm going to do that. Um, so this was Jenny for everyone. Um, if you appreciate her, her story or whatever, what she does on her streams, which is breakfast and check-ins among other peer support and fun little games near and now and again, go check out her streams in the morning. I highly recommend her a great morning streamer. Um, make her your breakfast and feelings check-in morning streamer. If you're looking for a breakfast and feelings morning check-in streamer, um, yeah, it's just a well, soothing thing. Yeah. Or an afternoon check-in if you're in another time. Yes. I'm, depending. It's cool in the morning, time. but it's nice to you know get the chance to check in with yourself at any point. You know. Absolutely, it's always a good time to check in with yourself. Just one of my. This is also I also recommend Jenny in general as one of my. On my radar, mental health uh, collaborative friendos who does some really great work and can hold space really well. So I appreciate her and I appreciate everything she, she does on on her channel. So yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay, I'm going to be right back. And thank and, you guys uh, all yeah. for being here as well. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to turn off the music so. Get a dance party going in here. And we're Bye, going guys. to do things. All right. Bye. See you another time. See ya.